Episode 3 of Demon Slayer is now out for you guys to go and check out now. We're going to talk about it. Smash your thoughts down in the comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And let's talk about the newest episode of the Swordsmith Village arc right now. Okay, so last week's episode, episode 2, was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was going to be more of that, you know, how do I explain it? Like a... An episode where we dive into a bit more of the backstory of certain characters. We try to understand the actual environment we're in. And now episode 3 actually caught me off by surprise. I didn't actually expect us to get into the action this quickly, but we did. And I'm super excited for it because, man, was it freaking awesome, man. This episode is just absolutely out of this world good. Like, you're thinking to yourself, how do you top off all these other fights we've had? And it looks like if they're going to continue down this route, they're going to just keep topping it every single time. Now, this episode, we see that sword that was in the last week's episode. It's rusted. It gets taken away, and it's going to get polished and everything like that by Tanjiro's swordsmith guy. So he's going to take it away, and he's going to do all that stuff. Meanwhile, <laughs> Tanjiro is trying to make friends with Genya, and I find it funny. It's absolutely hilarious. It's brilliant. And then, so he goes to sleep, and then the Misty, uh, Mist Hashira actually wakes him up and is like, yo, have you seen my swordsmith? I haven't seen him. Let's go look for him. And then out of nowhere, this, this thing opens the door as they sense something coming to him. And earlier on in the episode, we actually saw that the Upper Moon 5 and Upper Moon 4 have actually penetrated and infiltrated the swordsmith village. Now we see... One of them absolutely just bring one of the swordsmiths into his little vase and just, oh, it's gross. And then spit him back out and he's all like messed up. It's pretty insane. And then so we see that the Upper Moon 4 is actually entering the room. And now the Upper Moon 4 has unique powers. So if you guys have read the manga and stuff like that, you know exactly what his powers are. And his sort of demon blood, blood, um, blood demon art thing is. And we see some of it on display in this episode. So we obviously see him come in as the, you know, the scared, frightened, emotional side of that demon. And the Miss Demon absolutely just, you know, they can't hit him or anything like that. He misses the first time. Tanjiro misses him. Nezuko hits him up. And then, boom, the head sliced off. But with the unique abilities of this demon, he actually, when you decapitate him, spawns into multiple other demons and i love this demon because it's all the different emotions so you got rage you got uh you got fun you exactly there's all these different type of emotions that this demon has and different forms and we see that on display here as they do they each time they do it there's just more come come about which is freaking awesome and i love the look of the mist breathing like we see it on the actual paper itself in the manga and it looks cool but when you animate it, it just looked absolutely incredible. It does. Just the color, just the way that it moves is just absolutely brilliant. And then the demon's powers, when they're animated, is just absolutely insane with the colorization. It's just absolutely top tier. And we see him knock the Miss Hashira well away. And what I love then is now they're trying to fight this. Genya's there and everything's just... It's going to nuts. It's absolutely going nuts. They're slicing heads left, right, and center. And they're like, holy shit, there's just more coming. So Tanjiro's like, well, that's not his vital point. Now we have to find his vital point. How do I find that point that I need to slice and slash? Because it's not his head. And this is what I love about this show is it's unique. It's all about strategic. It's not necessarily about power. It's about how you can figure out and maneuver around your opponent with a strategic way. Instead of just having brute force, which is what I absolutely love about this show so much. And so now we see what's going on. We see one of their one of the uh, demons come down and actually pick Tanjiro up. He can actually fly. He's got like part bird legs and wings, and he's taking Tanjiro up. Genya's getting stabbed. Nezuko's got to go save him. It's that's all happening. And then we go to the Mist Demon and we, uh, not the Mist Demon, the Mist Hashira as he's running. And he sees this little kid in trouble against another demon. And this is where you start to see the thought process that is trained into the Hashiras. What is their main objective? What is their top priority? And he's talking about it. The chief comes first. 
anyone with good skills that is an asset comes first. I must save them. That's what I gotta do. I gotta go defeat this upper rank. Because at the moment they only think there's one upper upper rank demon. So he's like, I gotta go defeat this demon. I gotta go do all this. This kid is like low priority. I don't need to do it. But what I love is he remembers the conversation he just had with Tanjiro about how Tanjiro is saying, saving people, it comes back around. So I love that Tanjiro's whole demeanor is coming off and playing off on other people as well. And this is where we see the most missed Hashira actually clocking and go, holy shit, you know what? This kid may be right. So he steps in to save this kid instead. And now we have him versus the other upper moon, upper moon five. So I love that this is, this is what I love about this show, this anime so much and the manga is the way that these characters, their whole ideology and everything comes off and rubs off on other people. Like we saw the impact Ren Goku had on our main three, on Zenitsu, on Inosuke and on Tanjiro. We saw that. We see the, 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 uh, the aura that he had on Tengen as well and how Tengen looked up to him as well. We, we see the impact of these characters and their ideology so much in this series. And now we're seeing Tanjiro's personality start to rub off on other people. The animation is absolutely spectacular in this episode. Again, I mean, Demon Slayer is always looking great. It just, it does. It just, I don't know why, it just always looks absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It's just, it's incredible. Just the different colors that they mix in with the different attacks. Like when the lightning's going on with the yellow and blue, it looks incredible. When the Mist Hashira gets flown off, that green fade that comes in, it just looks good. And the design of the demons are absolutely fantastic. And they do it so much justice getting it from the paper onto the actual screen. They look absolutely incredible. I love all that too. The music, the score, I mean, Demon Slayer always has great scores as well. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I love this opening. The opening for this Demon Slayer arc is absolutely awesome. I absolutely love it, man. It looks cool. The music's cool. But everything about this episode, I absolutely love. I'm interested to see what they're going to do with this uh, sword now, how this is all going to come about. That's going to look cool and stuff like that. But so far, I'm absolutely loving it. I cannot wait for the next few episodes. If, it, if this episode's anything to go by, the next episode's going to look absolutely incredible as well. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What did you guys all think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down there. Smash that like button for me and click subscribe as well. And without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.